when you remember he was um, studying law at um, what was then Uni Unitra, and um, he was expelled because of student um, activism. And so he came and he was staying in the in Sabeza house with us, with me and others. And um, I was telling him about the work we were doing and he got very excited about it. And he said, could he come with us on our next sort of, um, what some would call it, our next visit to the village. And at that stage, we were focusing on spring protection. And um, the late Nokariot, who was one of our community health workers, was taking us around to look at um, the where the possible spring sites were because in 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 this area we don't have rocky mountains like when we went to Stacksbrett to learn about the spring protection from EDA, but we have springs bubbling out of the ground. And it's more difficult to say whether that's the eye of the spring or not. And so what had to happen was you would then have to dig and then see how the water came up. And so Batandra uh, came with um, Sis Beatrice and Tatum Kwati and myself um, and immediately got digging um, with Tatum Kwati while we <laughs> watched and he got very, very excited about this. And he said, well, he's here to help um, because he can see how water is so important in people's lives. And so from then on, um, he used to work with us around the spring protection. And um, I think, yeah, and then it was more or less at that time that Healthcare Trust, who was based in Cape Town, was thinking of really getting the project um, embedded in the community of Kailanga. And um, so I was then going to leave and have someone take over my coordinating post. And we got applications and Batandra's was top. And that's how he then got appointed as the coordinator of healthcare trust um, in general, not just the spring protection, but also the other projects that we ran then, which were the village health workers, um, gardening projects, et cetera. So that's how he ca came to be involved. Um, now the project started um, mainly looking at um, common illnesses and like a lot of the um, village health worker projects at that time, people from the village were being trained to give information to the rest of the village and to make people understand the cause of the illness and um, yeah, to understand the causes of the illness and also the importance of staying on TB drugs and high blood pressure drugs and that um, because people used to what we call default from taking their medication. And then when you dig deeper, a lot of the time it's because the medication makes them feel nauseous and often they don't have food um, to eat. And part of the, if you dig deeper, what we call the but why problem is project is why don't they have the food? And it's all to do with employment, but also to do with um, the ability to grow food, um, vegetables and other things that you need. And um, then the reason why that can't be done consistently is because you have to rely on seasonal rains. And without this, without water at other times of the year, then you can't grow food consistently. 
And so for a long time, people were saying they needed um, water. Water was the big problem. And without water, you cannot have sustainable food, you know, food security. And that's when we started exploring how could we bring water um, to the villages. And um, one of the projects that we worked with was the Environmental Development Agency based in Johannesburg. But they had projects in Matatiel and Stagsbret. And they had already done spring protection. And so we connected with them. We took um, quite a few of the village health workers and I think it was a headman and others um, to Stagsbret to look at the spring protection and see how possible it was in Manzimashle. Yeah. So water was really at the more root cause of why people didn't have food security and didn't take their medication, et cetera, when you, you know, looked a bit deeper. And of course, economics and all of that came into it as well. That's how we got involved, moving slightly away from direct disease to going to the, you know, the, what we call the social determinants of health which are the economics, the politics, and the cultural. So that's what we were looking at, yeah. And I think that's another thing that Patandra was very interested in because he didn't see, he didn't see um, health only as getting medication. He understood those underlying um, deeper root causes of ill health. And... Yeah, that's why I think he, you know, got very interested in working in that development area. And yeah, rather than trying to study law again somewhere else or whatever. Some of the challenges were, and I think this is hindsight, um, I think, okay, um. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the challenges, I think, were mainly um, working in in community at that time. I mean, people might laugh now, but the whole thing of primary health care and community participation um, was not what the ruling parties, um, the apartheid government and that, and of course the government in the so-called independent Transkai, they were worried about getting communities to participate because it meant that communities would get more power. Um, and so I think that at that time it was a lot of, field workers and that were harassed by the security forces and things like that. So, you know, the, the feeling with the, th the kind of um, things that we used to hear is that this is just communism, <laughs> getting communities to work together and things like that. Um, and then also people in the village were also a little bit scared. And so sometimes participation wasn't as much as you could get because people were scared that gatherings and things like that would lead to them being harassed, et cetera, et cetera. So I think those were some of the challenges. Um, obviously, funding was also part of the challenges, although at that time we had pretty good funders from mainly the Scandinavian countries. Um, and also it was a new way of operating. And so I think people were also a little bit hesitant. Is this the way to do healthcare? Um, we also had quite a lot of opposition once um, Dr. Welile Shasha 
left um, Tyler Hospital. We got quite a lot of resistance from the actual, um, yeah, health workers that were more leaders. Um, and I can't remember the actual, <laughs> the detail of this, but at some point they were warning people not to work with us. So those were also some of the challenges. They said we were too, we were politicians and not health workers. That was one of the things, yeah. So I think those were the challenges. And then also, I think because we were so new in the field, um, we also didn't realize that you had to teach um people how to maintain the springs. So what I've learned since then is you actually have to check that the pipes are working. You might have to clean them out because remember the springs come from quite far and then you dig trenches and you lay pipes and you go all the way to the tanks and then to the taps. So there's a lot of... Um, pipes that need to regularly be checked to see if the water's flowing and there are ways of cleaning the pipes. Um, and we didn't know that. And so I think that's why some of the springs kind of dried up in that because they probably got blocked. Um, and that's something that if the spring protection project was started again, it would be those kind of things that would need to be looked at. Um, the other challenge is that there was also sometimes issues in the village and once or twice the um, pipes were cut by some others. <laughs> so we don't know what those issues were, but yeah. And then they had to be fixed. And so you really have to work at village um working together and not having factions in the villages as well. That also is was a challenge that we had.